what we looked at there in the report is that if you go to net zero emissions CO2 by 2050, um, then we just reach 1.5 around 2035 or something, but we are not going to shoot past it. So it is really uh, in line with what 60 countries around the world already have as targets, net zero CO2 targets. So what we look at um, from the science is if that target is implemented globally, globally, then we have a good chance of meeting that lower Paris Agreement target. But it requires swift and um, strong action on the mitigation side. Yeah, indeed. And the report says there's no time for delay, no room for excuses. We just heard from our Prime Minister just a moment ago, uh, who said Australia is doing its part, that technology will be the answer and that it's hard to compare our performance to other countries due to a lack of transparency. What do you say to that? Well, with the IPCC, we normally don't comment on individual countries. So I would have to take my IPCC head off and put my Melbourne research head on. Um, let me just do that. So um, I think it is, for Australia specifically, it is incredibly sad to see that vast opportunity that is in, ahead of us. We have incredible wealth of the mineral wealth, the iron ore, the alumina, the lithium, et cetera, in the ground. And we are blessed then more than any other country with renewable energy. So we could have the low electricity prices from uh, renewable energy power. We don't have to wait for new technologies. The technologies are there, that's solar and wind. And if we play the cards right, then we can really benefit from the world's transition to net zero. We can be an export powerhouse in energy intensive material. We can create jobs. And even if Australia didn't care about limiting further devastating wildfires, floods and droughts, we would do it simply for a job, from a jobs and growth perspective, as other countries do it. In the UK and Germany, it's not a question about which political color you have, but it's a question maybe how to get to net zero. Do we do bigger projects or smaller projects? And so Australia is very different in that regard, where it's still, for some perplexing reason, um, a political issue. Mm. So, I mean, simply put, what does Australia need to do? Well... Uh, it is relatively um, straightforward. Um, Australia uh, would need to grasp the opportunity that is right um, at its doorstep, which is um, implementing um, renewable energies and um, driving the electricity sector first to net zero emissions and then having a low cost electricity sector that can power through manufacturing industries and also power uh, electric transport. Why would we in Australia, before electric vehicles actually take off, implement um, a tax on its use. No other country <laughs> does that. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it is just doing what other countries do already. Um, other countries are much further ahead. But again, I say that from a researcher at the University of Melbourne, the IPCC report just looks at the geophysical um, requirements. And for that, in a global level, we just need to limit the cumulative amount of emissions. Mm -hmm. And may I just add, we, we put out these nine, uh, IPCC reports uh, since three decades now. In the first IPCC report in 1990, we had around 1,500 gigatons of cumulative CO2 emissions left before we reached that 1.5 degree mark. Now, today with that report, we only have 500 gigatons left. So we burn through two thirds of that um, carbon budget and there's only 500 gigatons left. And it's really not only important to have net zero emissions globally by 2050, it is also important to set now, to use this decade to set the world on the path towards it because it's the cumulative emissions that matter. If we don't limit cumulative emissions, then yes, we will shoot past 1.5 degree and get more heat waves, more extremes, more floods. Mm.